right, I would like to welcome everyone to the 2022 Parsons Field Institute Symposium. So welcome to all who are logged on right now and all who are logging on. My name is Melanie Lucek, uh, and I am the Director of Science and Education at the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. All right, just a little bit of housekeeping up front before we get started. Uh, please go ahead and mute yourself during presentations where you are not presenting. Uh, and that just helps reduce some of the background noise, uh, dogs barking, things like that, that we, we just don't want interrupting the presenters. Um, but don't forget to unmute yourself if you were asking a question. We will remind you if, you, if we see that. Uh, each presentation is going to be followed by questions, about five minutes, you know, give or take for, for questions. Please use the chat. If you have a question during a presentation, you can go ahead and put it in the chat button. And down below at the bottom of my screen, you can see kind of a screenshot of, uh, of the Zoom toolbar down there. Um, mute is on the very left and chat is right there in the middle highlighted in red. So go ahead and use that. Uh, we are going to have a break about halfway through this. Our presentations will go from 1 o'clock to 4.30, so naturally we did put a break in the middle. You're definitely going to want to come back after the break, though, because we have a special prize that I'm not going to uh, unveil right now. Uh, but we will be doing sort of a raffle. Mary has a random number generator and she's going to be working some random number magic to uh, select one of the participants who comes back from break. So definitely wanna do that. And then just really quick, you may have noticed that uh, instead of the, the word update, we're using the word symposium. We have decided to sort of collapse what we had as the, the Field Institute Symposium for a number of years into like kind of an update symposium sort of thing that we're doing yearly um, from here on out around this time of year. Mm -hmm. I figure that was the best way to reach our audiences in the most efficient manner. And so we will be referring to this as a symposium for here on out, just because it sounds mm -hmm. like a little bit more fancy. So, all right. Here's a, here's a screenshot of today's agenda. Um, if you are here, you're in for a treat. Uh, we're opening with Science at the Conservancy and then John Zacchaeus, our Citizen Science Chair is going to bring us a year of accomplishments uh, and share so, some of the wonderful things that we've accomplished together this year. Next, we're gonna address our biodiversity uh, priorities. And one of the, the main um, initiatives uh, it, that we have is protecting biodiversity. And we're highlighting some of the projects where we have new information or a new twist on an old project and just new, new things to bring to you. Then we're gonna take our 15 minute break and have our door prize, our virtual door prize. Uh, next, we'll be addressing the restoring the Sonoran Desert Pillar, um, talking about fighting invasives <clears throat> one plant at a time. We have a special guest from uh, Intel who is going to be sharing uh, their project that they've been working on with us um, using drone technology to, to, uh, to train artificial intelligence to look for invasives from the air. And then we're gonna have an update on our restoration projects. And then we're gonna end with a look forward into the future. So really briefly, um, I was very, very happy to rejoin the Conservancy back in the fall and officially and in person in January. Um, and I cannot believe how much the Parsons Field Institute has grown since I had left five years ago. It amazed me. We're, we're in our 11th year now, um, and we've had 11 years of success. What started as a small program studying the flora and fauna of the preserve through flora and fauna surveys grew into something that um, not only did uh, ecological monitoring to continually check the pulse of the preserve and make sure that it's healthy, but also is branched into some original research in um, bio crust, some of the geological studies and, and a number of other things. So uh, it's, it's been really fun to just watch it grow and watch it blossom. 
um, some of the very, very short list of major accomplishments. I mean, we, we really could make a much longer list, but I wanted to just highlight a few things that reach back, you know, uh, through those 11 years. First off, you know, in the first few years, we completed flora and fauna surveys. And before that, we didn't even know what plants and animals inhabited the preserve. And knowing that was key to managing it. Um, since then, we have had seven peer-reviewed publications, uh, and those are written by both staff and stewards and interns in some cases, and it's just a wonderful collaboration. We've presented nationally and at some international conferences. We haven't physically presented internationally. Maybe we will be in Hawaii one of these days, but, uh, but we have presented at conferences where people around the world have been present and national conferences where people learned about our citizen science model and how we accomplish the work that we do. Uh, in 2014, we won the Prescordia Award, which is a very, very sought after award from Arizona Forward. That was for the citizen science program. And then in 2017, our uh, phenology project won the Pheno Champion Award and has been asked back uh, repeatedly to talk to the National Phenology Project about um, how we do such an amazing job with that, that information. You'll be hearing a little bit more about that later. Um, well, I wanted to kind of go back a little bit further and say, you know, a lot of the successes of the Field Institute and of the Citizen Science Program draw on the successes of the unique conservancy model, where at the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy, our volunteer stewards work. Um, we have about nine programs for those of you who are, who are new to us. Uh, and stewards actually run these programs. So our volunteers are integral to every single thing that we do. The preserve is a unique space. It's over 30,000 acres and encompasses all, a little bit over 25% of the landmass of Scottsdale. And I tell people it's almost a miracle that it exists, knowing that uh, that that a lot of that land was set aside during hot real estate markets. So we have something really special here in Scottsdale, and we have something really special here in the region because it is the largest urban preserve in the nation. And if you have been following, um, you know, some of our wildlife connectivity projects, you know that uh, large continuous land masses are the best at preserving wildlife and preserving those corridors that wildlife need to survive. So we, one of the reasons that we have such incredible biological diversity here in the preserve is its size and its connection to other places. And then it is part of the Sonoran Desert, which is an incredibly large, incredibly biodiverse desert system that spans through Mexico, Arizona, parts of California, and, uh, and is very unique. So beyond the preserve, um, you know, our work really focuses on the preserve, but we also know that plants and animals don't see boundaries. Um, this goes for the plants and animals we want to keep here and the ones that we don't want here. So in order to really preserve what we've got, we've got to work with partners to take a regional approach. And I put this map here uh, that was created for the Central Arizona Conservation Alliance, one of our partners, uh, by the uh, Trust for Public Land, another great nonprofit. And they created this map of all of the open spaces of various types in Central Arizona. And you can see the preserve as large as we are, we are just this little one in, in you know, in among all of these different open spaces. And so work with these partners is, uh, is really important to what we do um, and preserving it long-term. Uh, to borrow a phrase from our education program, everything is connected and always changing. So going back to the citizen science model, we talked about how we've, uh, we've really had many opportunities to share this model with other organizations to help them 
build their own citizen science programs. And this is the organizational chart. It really shows the complexity of our citizen science model. Again, this is built on the conservancy model of volunteerism. This also shows the many, many projects that we have going at any one time. You're gonna hear more about those from John in a little bit, but just gives you a sense of what can be accomplished when people work together. Again, some of the unique things about this is that it's self-run. Um, our stewards lead projects, it's self-perpetuating, meaning that people um, recruit the next leaders from within. Um, we work with experts and we do so much, we do field work, but we do so much more than field work as well. It takes many, many partners, and this is just uh, a snippet of, you know, our major partners. Um, one of them I've got to call out is the city of Scottsdale. We work very closely with them on, um, on many of our projects. Uh, Central Arizona Conservation Alliance, uh, Northern Arizona University, Dr. Helen Rowe, who many of you know, works for the Northern Arizona University and also is a contractor with the, um, with the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy and Parsons Field Institute. So we have a very close relationship there. Arizona State University and many, many more. We can't do this without our partners. And that brings me to the last bit where I'm gonna set the stage for everything that we do with some of our major top level initiatives from our strategic plan. So these are the things that really drive what we do um, and, and you know what, the way we're working towards the future. So one of them is to make research accessible to scientific institutions and citizen science communities. Make research understandable and accessible to the general community from adults, from children to adult learners. Maximize the impact by planning and conducting research internally and through collaborative efforts with scientific and other organizations and include the elements of climate change and other environmental impacts on our research projects. So as we keep them, um, as we move forward, keep those things in mind because they are, you know, some of the most important things that our work goes back to.